First of all, I just want to apologize for any sniveling or uh, coughing during this video because I'm sick at the moment, so that may happen during the recording of this. Uh, in this video, we are going to take a look at components. As you will see, we will make bare bones, just a simple component that we can use on our site. And in the next videos, we are going to take that a bit further and add some options to our components. So first of all, let's just remind ourselves what components actually are. As you can see, there is nothing much going on on my homepage. But if I go to the backend, go to the homepage and then go to components, I have this list of components that are coming from the blog plugin that I have installed on this site. And as you can see, I have this post list right here. So I'm just going to take that post list, put it right here. And as you can see, I get this box with some options in it. So for example, posts per page and so on. I can turn it off. And as you can see down here, we have the call to that component. So component blog posts, it is calling it by these alias right here. Okay, so if I save the page and go to my home page now, refresh it, I get new post, first blog post and so on. So this is the post list uh, of that blog plugin. In this episode, we are going to create a similar thing, but much, much simpler. We're just going to display the list of actors that we have uh, saved in our October CMS. First of all, we have to create directory structure just like we did for form, form widgets. And it's going to be components. And then I'm going to call my component actors actors.php. Now, as you can see, I have this components directory right here, and then I have actors.php. We need to create one more file and one more directory. And then in that uh, directory, I'm going to create another file called default.htm. So it's the similar thing to what we created right here. If we go to actor box, partials, and then we have this widget.htm. For components, we just create a directory with the same name and call it default.htm. Okay, and that's it. Now we have components, actors with default.htm, and then we have actors.php. So this is the main file for our component. Of course, in plugin.php, we are going to have to register that component. As you can see, we already have uh, this method prepared for us by the builder plugin. So first of all, uh, we have to create that plugin before it, we register it. So in actress.php, I'm going to namespace it. So the namespace is going to be watch, learn movies components. Next, we need to use the component base class. So use CMS classes component base. And since we are going to be displaying actors, uh, I'm going to use the actor model. Okay, so now that we got that settled, let's just cre extend the component base class. Okay, so now we have to uh, set the details for that uh, function uh, for that component. So public function component details. Okay, and now we return the name and the description of the component. Okay, that should be it. So the name of our component is going to be actor list and the description is going to be a list of actors. Okay, and now we have to set some data for that component. So we want the list of actors. So when we uh, drag our component to our page, we want the list of actors to be displayed. So we are going to create a protected method 
and call it load actors. And in that method, we are just going to return all of our actors, so the Laravel way. Uh, the easiest way to do that is just return actor all. And that's it. Next thing we need to do, we need to define a on run method. So the on run method is a method that comes with October CMS and it's telling the component what, what to do when that component is displayed. So on run, we just want to load those actors and assign them to a variable. And now we do this actors equals this load actors. So we are calling this load actors method. Okay, and now we just have to define a variable. The variable is going to be a public variable called actor. So public actors. And that should be it, except we have to say return right here, not return. Uh, and that's it for our component. Now we have to register that component and create an HTML that will display our data. First of all, I just register our, our component and then try to display it in the backend. So to see if it actually even works, if we didn't screw something up. So we already have this public function method called uh, register components and we just return an array of components that we have. So we only have one component, so we are going to return watch learn movies components actors and assign it an alias of actors. Okay, that should be it. So watch learn movies components actors. And uh, now we go to our backend. Let's remove this uh, post list. Okay. Uh, whenever you, uh, wherever you click inside this text box, that's where the component is going to show up. So let's just go to components right now. Uh, refresh it first of all. So reload this. And if we go to home page, I forgot to save the home page, so I have to remove the list again, save it. And now if we go to components, as you can see, we have this movies menu item right here and we have actor list component. So this is our component. I'm just going to uh, drag it right here, actually right here. And now we have this actor list. So as you can see, the only thing we can change is alias for our actor list. But in the next episode, I'm going to show you how you can put much more options uh, inside of this box and control your component a bit better. So for now, we have this component actors right here and we have it here, save it. And of course, if we go to our homepage right now and refresh it, nothing should actually happen because we still didn't write the HTML for our component. So we are going to do that right now. So first of all, we have to set the actors variable to be on this page. So to do that, we just open up uh, tweak tags and then just use the set function uh, to set the actors. So it's something like setting a variable in PHP. Okay, now we have this actors variable set up and now we can use twig to display those uh, actors names, for example. So I'm just going to create a ul tag. And then inside of that, I'm just going to open up for each loop. And inside the for each loop, I'm just going to display the actor's first name and last name. If we save this, that should actually be, be it. Let's just check out our page. 
to see if we are getting anything. So as you can see, we have Ellen Page, Brad Pitt, Kevin Spacey, Edward Norton, and so on. So we are displaying the list of all the actors that we have. Of course, you can extend this functionality to do whatever you want, but uh, for now, this is just a simple demonstration of how components work and how you can get them uh, set up. Also, if we go right here and I fork this code, so I click that fork icon. Now we can see right here the uh, HTML that is getting outputted. So you can change it right here if you want. So we have four actor in actors and so on. You can of course change it here or use your code editor. Okay, so this is it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how you can add more options to your components and, for example, control how many actors gets outputted to your page. So you can control the number of actors that, uh, that gets displayed. So, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content I put out, maybe, I don't know, subscribe to the channel. Also, you can follow me on Facebook or on Twitter and ask me questions there. Don't forget everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub, the link will be in the description below. And uh, thanks for watching once again and I'll see you in the next episode.